Hey everybody, welcome back after my hiatus. It's been a couple months since I've done anything with my 3D printer and the other day, it straight jammed on me. In fact, it makes this noise. It makes that grinding noise. Screw's not turning. Well, That's it doesn't moving. move and it shouldn't be doing that. It should be moving. Anyway, we're gonna start a repair that I found online, including on the Elegoo website itself to lube it. I'm putting a piece of foam down there to protect my screen. First thing we have to do is remove the apical plate. That's the top part here. It takes a uh, three millimeter Allen head. Comes off really easy. Actually, you only have to remove a couple of screws. And not that I expect the armature to drop or anything like that and slam down, but I've got it there just to protect that screen just in case because I am paranoid. And we've almost got this off. Yeah, between being sick and work being busy and, you know, just generally being gone for the summer, uh, I've kind of been MIA, but I'm getting back into it. And like I said the other day, I went to 3D print this thing. Was successful on the first print and then got down to, just, you know, several layers to the next print and froze in place. So, next step is you got to, if, you, if, if it won't move at all, you're going to have to loosen up this special plate right here. What this does, this is actually what the screw, the main screw, connects to and pulls the uh, the armature up and down for the print head. Or print head just attached to that and slides up and down in the rails. See, just like that. So, I was able to twist it, but then I noticed that the main screw was still twisting with it. So, after fiddling with it for a couple seconds, I decided to do what most of us would, use a pair of pliers. But before I did that, I took a old rag that I had, I put it over the top here and protected where I was going to be using the pliers to crimp down on. So when I did that, and I was able to twist that and eventually I actually got it twisted past the frozen area and uh, so to speak, and I was able to use the machine itself to basically tell it to go up down I don't know but I just held on to it and it unscrewed itself and saved me a lot of time yeah so can you see it got pretty stuck right there for a couple seconds and what it is and what I've been told is that the grease that they lube the stuff with from the factory doesn't last too long especially if it's not being used constantly and will seize up or basically become too thick won't lubricate the parts whatever it might be but I saw that based off of some internet suggestions, which you'll see here in just a few seconds. Okay, I'm done fiddling with that, and we'll just cut over to where I have it off. What I'm gonna do with this is, you can tell there's a little bit of old grease and it's very thick there. I'm gonna clean that out. I uh, don't wanna lose the screws to this because those are tiny screws and they disappear in a dark carpet, let me tell you. So, as you can see, the armature itself is completely free. It rolls up and down, it's got a little bit of residue on it, but you can actually see it's got ball bearings in there. I was not aware of that until I took it apart. And uh, yeah. So, next step is we've got to clean all that old grease off. So, I'm going to go over to the manual movement, go to the 10 millimeter setting, as you can see, is already selected there. Hold my rag there. And just tap the ever loving crap out of that button in order to just kind of go along with the flow. I'm just letting the uh, screw guide the rag up as it cleans off uh, what little bit of grease was left over. I'm sure there's more thorough ways to do this, but not with my tool or skill set. <laughs> so, yeah, and now I've got it all done. It's all been taken care of uh, as far as the main screw goes. Now we're looking at my armature. And I got a little bit of residue on there. This is the part that holds the print head. If you notice, I got a little bit of shim there on my zero G limiter, um, or Z axis limiter, sorry, because I had used a magnetic build plate. Now, that caused a little bit of a problem we'll get into later, because as you can see there, it looked just fine. And then, so I put it to the side, and it's time to use some Q-tips to do the magic work. And I'm just going to clean the ever-loving crud, literally, 
out of this little attachment piece here. The part that the, uh, it's threaded on the inside, it's the part the main screw attaches to. It was actually a lot easier to do this repair or whatever you want to call it, maintenance, uh, than I thought it was going to. I was freaked out because I'm almost to the end of my warranty on this. I've had it almost a year. And I was like, oh man, my, you know, $200, $300 printer is just about to go kaput. But thanks to Reddit and Elegoo instructions, uh, here we are. I grabbed some Lucas Extra uh, Heavy Duty Grease, which is an NLGI rating of two, if that makes any sense to anybody. Don't use the stuff in the red for the red and tacky. That's not what we want. So this was a suggestion I found either off of Reddit or on uh, YouTube. Not sure who it was, but uh, it seems to be working fine so far. The repair has since been completed, and I'm on my third set of prints right now. A little bit longer run, 15-hour print. What I do is I just get some on my gloved hand here, and I definitely recommend gloves. And I accidentally went over one millimeter, but I just run it up and down, and uh, just really well lubric lubricate that uh, main screw right there because that is what caused this problem. This is a uh, polyurea, I believe, lubricant, grease, whatever you want to call it. It's supposed to be pretty good for maintaining, you know, lubrication even in high heat situations, which obviously this doesn't on that on that long screw there. So, yeah, just up and down, left and right, all over, make it right. Uh, generally, they do sell this Lucas Extra Heavy Duty Grease, I believe, in a tub by itself, but all I could find it was in that multi-pack at AutoZone. And then I just took a Q-tip, uh, lobbed a bunch of the uh, Lucas grease on there, and uh, greased the ever-loving heck out of the threads inside of that as well. Then uh, from the top, uh, I went ahead and I inserted, I think that is where I bent my zero-g limiter. I let it go down a little fast, but at least I figured it out. So basically started it by hand and then I ran the machine until I got this locked into place low enough where I could work with it and not have to hold that armature so far up. Cleaned off the really excessive grease on the bottom where to push it all down. I'm like, well, it's not going to go in. So, And by the way, I changed my gloves several times during this video, during the making of this video, just because there was just so much different kind of residue and junk. Don't know what I was doing there, but okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up a little bit. I'm gonna lift up this plate, or the armature, and I'm gonna try to start and drop stuff. Well, at least it kind of hit the, <laughs> that kind of hit the uh, foam protector. Anyway, I got them started, I think, and then uh, you'll see here in a second, I'm able to let it go a little bit. Once it's secure, it's not gonna go down, Just but just a few millimeters of that. So, I finished tightening these guys up, make sure there's no slip or slop or play, and uh, we're good to go, or so I thought at the time, but I did not realize that at the time I had bent my zero G limiter. Yeah, gotta make sure I put the lid back on the grease just to be safe. Don't want an extra mess. We'll finish tightening down the uh, the attachment plate here to the print head armature, and there. Should do it, and I don't force this, it is just a firm pressure. I don't want to strip anything out, have to wait for replacement parts, that'd be lame. And let's see here. Yep, going up and down, no problem. There's no build plate, so it goes down, it still finds the Z limiter, and it goes, Oh, we're done. And I'm like, That's cool, but it was not cool. And from here, I just run it up and down a whole bunch. Wow, I really should have cut the video a little bit earlier than this. I'm running all the stuff to see. Got a little extra slop of grease. So I'll just whoop right off of there. Wipe it on a towel, hopefully. You notice that I don't have the apical plate back on yet. So it's very important that if you're going to do this without that top plate on, that you don't let the armature go above a certain point where it goes bling and flies off. I don't know if we go flying off, but as you can see in that uh, that uh, that gray slot down there by the 
on the left of the bottom of the armature, that's a 3D printed shim I built. I actually ended up having to get an extra pack of screws, that machine screws that fit this, because the screws that came with it were way too short to be able to put in that shim. I think I found them at Home Depot Lowe's. Took me a while looking. Anyway, I go pretty far up, and I'm gonna come on pretty far down. And down. Anyway, yeah, while well, this is happening, we'll talk about some stuff I've got coming up. I'm gonna be uh, working on some more dice. My Etsy store will be online, ready to ship and sell some dice and even some 3D printed minis here coming up. Um, it's gonna be the Armored Pig Store. That's, you know, an Armored is obviously A-R-M-O-U-R-E-D on at Etsy. I'm gonna be selling a custom made resin dice like you see me create on the channel at a decent price. Uh, 3D printed miniatures. I'll offer a service to 3D print your miniatures at a decent price and ship them to you. Um, something like if you go through Hero Forge like I do to design my minis, that's fine. I'm also got uh, commercial licenses for some of the more famous names for, I think it's MZ for something, but it's Miguel Zavala stuff. Um, I got commercial license to print and sell his items and I'll be selling those designs on my store as well. Fairly cheap. And if they're not in stock, it's really easy to print them. So if you can help me out, that'd be great. So again, here's where I thought, I was like, woohoo, we're done. But I was wrong. And I was scared when I first found out I was wrong. But everything was good in the end, so if you'll care. So I started going blah, blah, blah on how to properly level a build plate, which as we all know on the LG Mars 2 Pro and I believe a couple other models, you loosen these screws. The print head itself drops and becomes loose. There's a spring inside that will let it go up and down. Make sure it's on tight. But at this point, I forgot to put on my snap plate. Oh, there we go. Boom. So now we're good to uh, go ahead and put it on because you got to have that on the calibrate your, um, not just your home point, but your set zero. So tighten that back down on the armature. There we go. Thinking I'm ready to go. I got my piece of paper here to test my, my lift distance. Kind of about the same thickness as a FUP film, I think, is what they're what they're thinking. And then I drop her on down, and it gets almost home, and I'm like feeling really good about myself. But then I hear this. And I stopped it really quick. Speaking of stopping, let's take a moment and I'm going to ask you, if you haven't, to subscribe and like this video. Thank you. So I ask. And moving on, I finally figured it out and was, oh, nope, it grinded once more. Ground? Whatever. <sighs> There's actually a couple more tries before I accidentally happened to take a look and see that my Z limiter was a bit upward, which made it think it was further up than it was. So I took that off. Oh yeah, here, you can actually see here, it's f slightly bent down, but it was like bent at a lower angle than that when I found it. So I ended up bending it back straight and that seemed to have solved the problem. And I was just talking about the shim and everything and the different screws I had to get there. I self narrate before I do my voiceovers. Voiceovers, whoa, it's late at night, can't speak. Anyway, so here we everything's loose and it goes beep beep for me now because I did a software update and turned on the beeps. And look at that. Can you believe it? We're ready to go. So from here, to finish up balancing out your leveling out your plate, you tighten up these screws. Nice and firm. And again, not too much pressure. You don't want to break anything. Just making sure everything's secure and snug. So I did there. Now right here, your paper should be pretty tightly wedged in there, but you're gonna put it on 0 0.10 millimeters and you're gonna go up one step at a time until it barely comes out with very minimal resistance. And I think it was right about here, I was like, mm, that seems good. 
yeah a little bit of friction but it goes under and out no problem so yep i tried it going down one more time and then it didn't work so i went back up from here you go back out you hit the home button confirm and that sets your new home location not your zero z axis point so now i'm having my son help me out here he was really excited he wanted me to print him a new mario item so he can paint it it's about to be eight he loves everything mario everything sonic i think he still likes mickey mouse but not so much so we got it lifted up i have my vat that was filled from when i first tried it gotta loosen up the screws a little bit more slide it in very carefully because i don't want to uh, spill any of the resin tighten those screws down and i use uh elegoo's abs like photopolymer resin i'll link that in the description as well as the grease any and those will be affiliate links and any affiliate links that get clicked and you buy stuff from there a little bit of money goes towards me so i can put it back into the channel to make more videos um i've actually had somebody buy a couple things so far that's kind of exciting and there's the yoshi that we found and then we put supports on and he's pushed the play button 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 and down it in it goes and we don't hear any problems so that was perfect so from here i tell him go ahead and grab the the light shield and put on top and he about runs over the camera out of excitement but he gets it down on there a little bit of help from me i think snug as a bug in a rug works pretty good and then we'll skip ahead about four hours and some change Boop. the print is done and it looks like it finished like it should have first thing uh my son said is oh it looks smaller than i thought it would I'm like well I told you it wasn't very long <laughs> showed him on the screen on the on the slicing software and everything but here i uh, kind of did something that he hasn't got to do before and i let him try to extract yoshi from the uh, snap plate tuck it off for him kind of give him some instructions and i do have to help him a little bit but we get him and we didn't break him so that's always exciting and a little bit and a little bit of daddy help here pop and off he came we trimmed him up a little bit left a little ghost silhouette and then we got him into the alcohol bath and kind of showed my son how to use the the system here although i really don't know if he comprehended this part or not but <laughs> he's a quick learner i think he's just afraid to push those buttons and uh uh, break it or something anyway we uh, usually clean clean our prints for about five minutes and that's what we did Yoshi came up into that little tornado and had a little tornado alcohol bath we popped him out let him dry off finished drying him off secured our alcohol bucket with its lid this mercury um, cure cure and wash washing cure all in one it's an Elgu Mercury Plus. That's what it is. I got it when I got my printer. It was like a bundle deal or something like that. But just put the little rotator plate on. My son will just completely block the camera view. My daughter is trying to work the camera. Everybody wants to help. <laughs> and there he goes. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. I really hope that I was able to help you guys figure out if you have a stuck Z-axis um, or anything like that. Uh, as always... Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the flip flop later.